All right. 7.1, investigating properties of triangles. Now, we're especially going to be looking at similar triangles in the end of this particular chapter, but we're going to have two parts to this video. First, we're going to focus on congruency. But before we do that, we need to understand that two triangles may be identified as either congruent, similar, or neither. Today we're going to focus on being congruent, on what makes two triangles congruent. Well, first thing we need to understand is there is a symbol that represents congruent. And this symbol here is used around the world. This symbol has a little curly on the top, so it's a tilde. The symbol is called a tilde, T-I-L-D-E. And underneath is an equal sign. So this represents congruency. Now, congruency means that the objects have the same shape and the same size. Now, when they have the same shape and same size, that means that the triangles are actually, two triangles that you're given are actually identical. They, they're identical in every way. Same size, same, same shape, same size. The corresponding angles and sides are all equal. Now, there are some conditions to prove congruency. Conditions for congruency are as follows and they are SSS congruency, which means three pairs of corresponding sides are equal, SAS congruency, which means two corresponding sides and a contained angle are equal, and finally the last part is side sides ASA, sorry, angle side angle congruency, which means two corresponding angles and a contained side are equal. Now this is going to be important. We're going to look at these three types and prove these type of congruencies on the next page. So some examples. So this next part, you're going to have to make a lot of notes about this. So I'm going to try and go through it as quickly as I can, but efficiently as I can, for you to understand that we can prove three different types of congruency side 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 congruency which means three pairs of sides are equal side angle side where you have two sides and the angle that is made up by those two sides so the contained angle that is the angle between the two sides are equal and finally angle side angle and that means you have two angles and the corresponding side so the side that is held up by those two angles are also equal. So this is going to be important, the contained part of this particular question. So example number one. You're asked to prove the triangles are congruent. So how do we do that? Let's look at some examples. Here's one. Here's the second one. And here's the third one. So what you should do now is stop the video and copy these examples down. So stop the video now and copy these examples. Alright, you're back. Now, in the first one, we're just going to focus on the very first one. The idea here is we're going to look at this and look at the triangles. What are the two triangles found in this question? Well, we have triangle A, B, and C. Alright, so looking here, we went from A to B to C. So we went from A, which is the angle between the single tick and the double tick, to B, which is across the double tick, down the side that doesn't have any tick. So how do you name the other triangle? Well, if I name the first one A, the corresponding angle to A would be, that's right, D. So triangle D and then C. Why are we going to C? Well again, we went from A to B then to C, so now we have to go D across to C and up to B. So DCB. It's very important that you name the triangles properly in the beginning because every question Everything after that, we can always remember the order that we name the letters, and then the corresponding letters that we order, we name in the same order that we name them in the beginning. And you'll see what I mean in a second. 
So the first thing what we're going to do is state the given pieces. So we know, looking at this, that none of the angles are given to us that are equal. It doesn't tell us it's parallel. It would have to tell us it's parallel in order to use that. We don't have that here. We only have side ticks, which means only the sides are equal. We don't know anything about the angles. We also know that this is another side that they both share. So we're going to use side, side, side to prove this. So it's one of the three that we just had on the previous page that we need to be able to prove it. So I'm going to start with AC. AC is my single tick, A to C. Look at the way it's named in the triangle, AC. So I named the first one AC in the first triangle. What is the corresponding matching side in this triangle? That would be the uh, DCB triangle. Which one is the corresponding side with AC? Well, look at the order. A, then C, then we want D, then B. So, DB are equal Y because it's given. You have to state Y in order to have a proper proof. The next part, AB is equal to, now look at the order, we named it AB, so logically we're going to name the next one DC. DC, and that's also because it's given. And finally, the third side is the one that they share. So in the first triangle, in triangle ABC, that is known as BC. What is it known as in the other triangle? So in the other triangle, if it's BC or last two letters, it has to be C. B. Remember, naming them in the proper order counts for understanding, okay? So therefore, we've given all three sides are equal in each triangle. Because they're equal, it means that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DCB because of side, side, side congruency. Next part, B. We're going to label it. We're going to separate. So we're finished part A right now, folks. Okay, we're just finished part A, and now we're going to go to B. To prove these two triangles are congruent, we know that we're given the two sides are equal, and because two sides are equal, we can either prove using side, 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 or side, angle, side. Well, we have two sides. We don't have the third side, but we do have an angle that's between those sides, and those are equal. So, tri in triangle BCA, eh, sorry, ABC, in triangle ABC, look at the way we named it, ABC, that is equal to triangle, let's see, DEC. You have to make sure you order it properly. So, triangle ABC and triangle DEC. What are we trying to prove? Well, we know the given information. BC is equal to EC. Notice the order. BC is equal to EC. And that's equal because the information is given. What is the other given piece of information we have? Well, that will be AC is equal to DC. And that is also because it's given. Now notice I left a space between here. Well, we have a side, we have a side, we need to have the angle that is between the two sides. And that's why I left a space here. We're going to fill in this space over here with the angle. The angle that we're talking about is this angle right there. This angle, which is angle ACB. So ACB, ACB is equal to, that's this angle right here, right there, if I just called it C, the biggest problem is I'm not sure what angle C it could be. One of four angles. So we have a hard time understanding that. So it's much better to name the actual angle using three letters. And the letter in the middle is the angle you're referring to. So I'm referring to angle C, but made up with A and B. So that means that ACB is my angle. Angle C is what I'm looking at. This angle right here is equal to what angle in the other one? That's right, it would equal to that one. Does anyone know why? Well, hopefully you're thinking, oh, they must be equal because they are 
That's right, opposite angle theorem. Opposite angle theorem means that if you have two intersecting lines like we do here, their opposite angles to each other are equal. So that means opposite angle theorem. And if you can't remember the letters, you, would, you could just write opposite angles there. You could just write, instead of OAT, you could just write opposite angles. And that would be enough to get you the full marks, just so that I understand where you're getting the information from. Now, finally, we need to conclude our proof. So that means that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEC because of angle side, sorry, not angle side angle, that's not right. Let's try that again. Because of side angle, let's try that again. Side angle side congruency. That would be the reason why. Okay. All right, and now we're going to focus on the last one right here. Just separate them. Part C. In triangle, now I'm going to name the first one, CAB. So this is CAB, folks. That's a B there. Let's fix that so you can see the B. CAB, and what's the name of the other triangle? Focus on the way I named it, CAB. What angle corresponds to this one? Hopefully you're remembering that it has to be this angle. Because I named it CAB, the other triangle, it's going to be called CDE. So it's very important the way you name the triangle. Because everything from there is based on the name of the triangle. So what information are you given? Let's name that. Well, we're given that AB is equal to ADE. And that's given. Now, we're given this information. The problem is we don't have any more sides. So the only option we have here is to name it via angle side angle. So what do you remember about parallel lines? Hopefully you remember that angle CAB would equal angle CDE. Why would those two equal? Hopefully you remember the pattern. The Z pattern, PLT, Z. That Z stands for Z pattern. PLT stands for parallel line theorem. So we want to be able to get the parallel line theorem and those angles are equal. You now do the other side. You have CBA is equal to angle CED. So those two angles are equal to each other again because of parallel line theorem Z pattern. And therefore, our final conclusion statement we can make is triangle CAB is congruent to triangle CDE because of angle-side-angle congruency. All right. So here are three different proofs using the three different conditions for congruency. The next part we're going to be focusing on is on similar triangles. So this is the congruent portion of the lesson, and we're not gonna, we don't have a lot of homework on the congruent part, but this is important that you see this. All right, let's moving on to similar triangles. Actually, before we do that, let's look at another example. I'm just going to put up another example, and I'm going to ask you to prove congruency for this triangle. Let's look at this. So example number two now. Compare the two triangles, and we're going to prove congruency here. So I want you to stop the video and try and prove congruency for this question. Okay, here we go. To prove congruency, I'm going to show you another way to do a proof. The last example that I had had proof and reason laid side by side with brackets. Another way to do it is do it by a table. You have proof on one side and a reason on the other. The proof we start off with the triangles. In triangle ABC, so ABC exactly like this, and triangle, how do we name the other triangle? If I named it from the single 
to nothing to double, we have to do the same way on the other triangle. Well, that will be triang in triangle ABC and triangle, that's right, CDA. We have the following information. We know that angle BAC, so B, here we go, BAC is given is equal to, so BAC, notice the way I even named it according to the original triangle, you name it the same way, DCA, and those two are equal, those angles are equal because it's given, and then another piece of information is given to you is that, okay, now, you're probably wondering about this, and then the following is this. So let's go over these three before I go on with the therefore. So I know that BAC and DCA are equal, and I also know that BCA is equal to DAC because that's also given to us with a double tick. Now we have two angles, so we now have to prove either the third angle is equal, well, we can't do third angle because remember it's not AAA congruency. We need to do either. So we have two angles, so we must use a side. The side that's contained by those two angles is this side right here. This is contained by those two angles. That means these, this side must be equal. And if you look at it, th of course they're equal. They're equal because this right here is the same side. It is AC on triangle ABC and CA and triangle CDA. So AC is equal to CA. Now notice the line on top. Some of you may have been taught in grade school about the line segment. This is a way we would indicate a line segment. So AC is equal to CA because they share a common side. So therefore, triangle ABC is concurrent to triangle CDA because of angle, side, angle, congruency. And that is literally how you would proof and reason when you compare triangles and prove congruency. All right, I think we're going to leave the lesson at this point in time. Um, but I want you to focus on the other parts of the lesson or the handout that you may have been given with this because we're going to go on to similar triangles in our next lesson on the next day. All right, folks, have a great day. Take care.